Hello, this is to walk you through the SLD eligibility readiness document. Um, this is not new information, but what this is meant to do is look at the policy for determining eligibility for students with specific learning disabilities and align that with pieces of the multi-tiered system of support framework that are integral and necessary before a school can really look to see are they ready to use this framework and use this information to determine if a student is eligible as a student with a learning disability. Um, so as seen, first part you see here is that as seen in the SLD policy addendum, um, the following kind of essential components must be in place um, to use the child's responsiveness to instruction and scientific research-based intervention as the basis for the eligibility decisions for students with SLD. So there's four components that really are integral to this model when using this model as a piece of eligibility decision-making for students with specific learning disabilities. So first you see a system of high-quality core instruction and scientific research-based intervention. Then multiple tiers of instruction that vary in intensity, matched to student need, a systematic process of problem solving, database decision making, and a comprehensive balanced assessment system that includes common formative assessments, interim or benchmark assessments, outcome assessments, universal screening, progress monitoring, and diagnostic assessments. And then we see here, just to kind of remind everyone that although NCDPI believes these essential components are necessary for decision making, um, the absence of these components can't be used as a reason for delaying or denying the provision of a full and individual evaluation. So how this document is laid out, we'll just quickly go through the structure of this so that you can become familiar with it, is that each of those four essential components listed above are listed here. And then under each one of those on the left-hand side, you see what should be kind of familiar to folks by now. You see some items that you will also find within the self-assessment of MTSS, the SAM. These are not all the items in the SAM, but these are some of the most um, necessary items when you're particularly looking at, is your school ready to use this model as a method of determining SLD eligibility or as a, a component of determining SLD eligibility? So what we've tried to do is define those four essential components found in SLD policy by way of some necessary items from the SAM. So you see on the left-hand side, the necessary items, and then on the right hand side, these are broken down into ways that you can check to see, do we really have these? So in other words, what does this necessary item mean? And then do we have each of the components that goes into that item? So if we take this very first one, the necessary item you see is that schedules provide adequate time for multiple tiers of evidence-based instruction and intervention to occur. So what does this mean? How can we check for this? Well, a school, or a district coordinator or district staff member helping a school could look to see, do we have a schedule that's based on student data that's developed through careful examination of our staff beliefs around student learning and academic engaged time? So in other words, do we have a master schedule that's based on the student data of our site in order to give adequate time for multiple tiers of instruction? The next check for this is, is time built into our schedule based on research-based recommendations for core, supplemental, and intensive. So do we have time based, built into our schedule to provide the necessary evidence-based tiers of instruction and intervention? Next, is time built into our schedule for collaboration and problem solving among staff? Next, is the master schedule reflect flex, flexible grouping opportunities based on student data? And then finally, in the time devoted to intervention, do we have a structure for instruction, curriculum, and environment that's defined systematically? So this item is broken down in that way. You can see along the way, each of these are also broken down with some checks.
And then we come to the next necessary or essential component for implementation um, for use to make policy decisions. And then the necessary items from the SAM on the left hand side and then some checks for these. So a school team could go through and quickly see, okay, so we have rated ourselves on the SAM that indicates that we're at least initially implementing in a lot of the components, the critical components that we would want to see initially implementing at our site. But have we really defined each of these items that need to be in place? In other words, do we really know what each of these items means? And do we have the best practices in place for these? This is just a way, this is not a required document, but this is just a way to ensure that when we're making decisions for students regarding disability eligibility, especially, that we really have the true picture of the model of North Carolina's multi-tiered system of support. Um, that's pretty much it for this document. So feel free to look through it if you have any questions, uh, comments, feedback please don't hesitate to get in touch with your regional MTSS consultant um, or any member of the Exceptional Children's staff at the Department of Public Instruction. Thank you so much and we hope you have a great day.